Hello and welcome to the DKMBA podcast. My name is Sean and joining me as always is the one and only Dante Bock from Mr. Bock from man. How are you? I'm good, Sean. I was disappointed to hear when we were sitting at my house eating breakfast just before. Sitting in the nook, a beautiful sunlit spot in my backyard that there is already such a thing as the nook cast from Tom Nook, I'm, the mayor of I'm 80, Crossing. I'm 80% sure let's, that... Let's, <laughs> let's fact check that right now, but very, very disappointing to hear that. Um, I don't know how the how the uh, the charging situation would work when we're out in the nook though, so maybe it's... No, nah, it, 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 it full wouldn't work. It's, it's done, especially considering that my... Laptop is basically a PC these days. I if it has less than eighty-seven percent charge. <laughs> Tom Nook is the mayor, but I can find nothing about the Nook cast, so mm. maybe it's not IP infringement. Yeah, right. Not that we care anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> um, but NBA playoff basketball, where we're just at the end of the first round, as we speak today, we're hoping to quickly wrap up this pod so I can go home and watch Golden State, hopefully close out their first round series uh, at home um, I could actually go either of two ways after this pod I could be sitting at home going I'm very smug right now as we were talking in the nook I've almost automatically placed us in the NBA finals which is you know a step up from last week placing us in the yeah, conference you, finals you, you have you have you, you were saying to me before that you'd love to see Boston struggle because it's better for the Warriors. And it's like, <laughs> well, okay, that only means one thing. <laughs> um, uh, maybe, maybe there'll be like a conference realignment halfway through the playoffs, so you just never know. But, um, yeah, yeah. so right now we're, we're talking just before game six of um, Golden State and Sacramento and game six of LA and Memphis. But something that did happen in the past few days that we will be talking about is the Jimmy Butlers uh, eliminating the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, where do you want to start with that? I don't know whether the story to start with is Jimmy Butler scoring 98 points (laughs) over two games or Miami blowing a 19-point lead in the fourth quarter. I mean, (laughs) Milwaukee blowing a 19-point lead in the fourth quarter Mm, mm. when they're already down 3-1. Yeah. Like, I don't know which of those is more remarkable. Really. It's a, it's actually pretty hard to start talking about it because, like, uh, do you want to start with, should we fire Bud? Do you want to start with Giannis's, what, 10 of 23? 10 throws? of 23 from the line. But also, Giannis, you know, having the back injuries was, like, taking IVs or something after yeah. the game. was, like, very yeah. not in shape and not happy. Yeah. Um, but let's start with Jimmy Butler because he's, just, let's, let's just say, the, the force that push this series to the way it is because I think a lot of people had this series ending in five but maybe not this outcome yeah um but Jimmy Butler is just like it's he's now putting himself at a level this is multiple multiple playoff runs where he's been the best player on the on the court and he's had the two years ago he had that shocking playoff run where they got swept by the Milwaukee Bucks or maybe it was in in five as well a gentleman sweep but Jimmy Butler's like slowly put together this resume where every single time he enters the playoffs people count him out I remember I was at a party the other day and you know I was just talking basketball 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 this is like months ago before the playoffs started um, and we were talking about Miami and then I, I said oh you know but then they're not looking too well this season like it's just sort of a little bit of a depressing situation um, but then someone just said to me oh but you know Jimmy's got that dog in him and I I don't want to have that conversation I don't want to be at a party where someone says someone has a dog in him as a reason for something but fuck it looks kind of like as cringe as it is like he's he's doing this he does, in the playoffs though. yeah he and, does and maybe the regular season is just him like trying to convince everyone that he's not good at making shots and he's just going to average 19.8 points or whatever then the playoffs comes around and he just takes the exact same shots, arguably the worst shots in basketball, and just makes them. It's yeah. like Jimmy Butler is like putting putting forward his case where it's like, are you a top 10 basketball player in the league that every team should be trying to get? Yeah. And it's kind of it's kind of weird because he just like he just in the regular season just does kind of score in the low twenties. Miami's always like good mm-hmm. and in the playoff picture, but like have rarely in the, you know, um, at least the last, like, say, like two or three seasons since they since they went to the finals, um, have rarely been like an elite team that you're like, oh, watch out, watch out for these guys. Mm. Um, where it was like, where, you know, like a serious kind of championship threat. Um, 
And yet he just is the biggest case study for like mentality in the playoffs because he comes in and he just does he just does this every time. Like he's the best player on the court in in these playoffs series, no matter who he's really going up against. Mm. And he was going up against Drew Holiday, who's probably the best like on ball defender in in the league. And, yeah, and, and, a, and a tall guard going yeah. against an average shooting guard. Yeah, has has been for a while, and mm. he's not only like cooked him in in kind of like back-to-back games he's telling him about it he's as well he's telling him about <laughs> it and he was telling him about it when they were down yeah you know yeah, they're yeah. making this they're making this rally from 19 points down at the start of the fourth quarter yeah and with five minutes left they're down by eight and he's telling him about it yeah, and with, yeah. you know three minutes left they're down by four he's telling him about it and yeah. then OT starts and he's telling him about it like th- that is uh, so cool <laughs> <laughs> the, it, it, it really it really is but it's that combination of that like that fire and that personality that like, coming through on the court with the blokes just averaged 48 points over his last two games yeah, 49 yeah. points over his last few games like coming up against you know a team with myriad 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 options to defend him and the you know the the second best rim protector in the league like the guy who came second in defensive yeah yeah defensive player of the year just like you managed to get past Holiday or Middleton's a good defender Giannis didn't really play on Jimmy Butler much but yeah. you know Giannis is like he's kind of there playing his, his he's a roaming walk, defender his ball yeah. walk role like yeah free safety sagging off yeah, and yeah. then you get to the cup and there's Brook Lopez and it's like well you you still just you scored fifty six points and it's like he gets to the cup and it's like yeah, Brook Lopez is there with his verticality stuff <coughs> and Jimmy was just like cool calm collected pump fake pump fake spin pump fake and then just gets and ones over and over and over again it's just it's it's pretty fucking cool but let's let's go from there because I saw some people retweeting something that happened in twenty nineteen where. Um, it was an adjustment in game three of that 2019 conference finals between the Bucks and the Toronto Raptors where um, Giannis was just killing him and then Nick Nurse said, hey, what are we going to do? And then Kawhi Leonard said, the adjustment is put me on Kawhi Leonard, put me on Giannis Antetokounmpo and we'll just, we'll go from there. That's all we can do. Um, and Giannis, again, didn't guard Jimmy Butler very much in this series. He famously didn't guard Jimmy Butler very much in the 2018 finals, in the 2018 playoffs. Um, and then when they made that adjustment, when they won in 2021, obviously winning the title, Giannis was the primary defender on Jimmy Butler. But there was none of that this series. And, and we mentioned the injury stuff and how he was just like not not in shape and everything. But from the coaching point of view, Mike Budenholzer, all the people who said he should be fired before 2021 have come right back out. I actually saw a few Bucks guys on Twitter saying, hey, I haven't used this graphic in like three years, <laughs> but here it is again. And they've just got all these files saved on their computer of Firebud. Um, but do you think they should fire Mike Budenholzer? No. Mm. No, I don't think they should because what's your... It's all well and good to say fire him. But say like hypothetically he's like the ninth best coach yeah. in the league. Yeah. You 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 fire him to bring in someone who's better than him? Well, cuz cuz firing him for firing him's sake is fine. But are yeah. you saying that there's like an elite coach just like waiting yeah. to come in? Cuz if that's if, Nick, Nick Nurse yeah, well, actually, that's a good point. I would rather have Nick <laughs> Nurse. Usually there is a Nick Nurse yeah, out there. Yeah, I would rather have Nick Nurse than, than Bud. If you're saying like Nick Nurse wants to come and coach this team, then all right, let's, let's yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Which I will say there have been no rumors towards that. Nick Nurse <clears> has been attached to quite a few teams now, <clears> um, <throat> and one of them ha- isn't the Bucks, which is quite yeah, weird. Yeah. Um, but ownership came out and said, no, nah, we're not firing Bud. This is just it. But we've, also, the, we've also seen ownership say that and then fire their coach this, immediately. Like, you... you you can't fire Bud and then like do what the Lakers have done and bring in like Darvin Ham like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a first time coach it's not the situation to do that so no. a, a team with a team with like four all star level players and the ninth best coach will more often than not do better than losing 4-1 in the first round well as as a one seed going against an eight seed that just came out of the play and was not well rested yeah um, that but- being said I, like that being said there there is like you know 2021 title notwithstanding mm-hmm. 
there is a history of like of like postseason underperformance here. That that's that's over like four or five years. It is a trend that's mm. impossible to kind of yeah ignore. There's been there's been one kind of like good run, mm. and that ended in a championship, and that that's what's bought Bud all this time. Yeah, but but also like you know sniffing sixty wins, or at least you know when when we do over unders, we're always like, of course the Bucks are going to go under because they're just a winning machine. Like that's there's something to be said for that. Not that the regular season matters that much, but it's like, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're running this team out there. They might bring everyone back this off season. If they bring back Bud, they're going to win over 55 games. That's just, that's just a fait accompli. Um, and I think it's just really unfortunate they've come against the heat so much because we were talking in the Nook, um, doing a little Nook cast before we do the podcast, um, that it's just so unlucky that Jimmy Butler, what Jimmy Butler wants to do is get a defender, even if it's like the best defender in, in Drew Holiday. Um, he just wants to get him he wants to just dribble to anywhere in the mid-range and then just shoot a shot over him and just make it because he's just better at basketball than that player um, and for the Bucks, who are very much like Brooke Lopez is going to sag as low as he possibly can like he would be next to the cameraman if they could um, he's just going to sit there they're just going to stop threes and they're going to stop um uh, shots in the paint and then Jimmy Butler's like sick well I fucking love the mid-range and then Jimmy Butler's just like the kryptonite to this Milwaukee Bucks winning machine and I'm I'm very much sure that they might go into the next the next round and we'll talk about this in a second but like the Knicks are just a different team who just have a different scheme and Jimmy Butler running out with just a bunch of bad players like Duncan Robinson and Cody Zeller and you know Kevin Love's hitting a few shots but he's still Kevin Love he can't mm. defend that's why he's fouling out but Jimmy Butler's running out there with bad players I wouldn't be surprised if the if the Knicks just win in five and it's like yes Jimmy Butler's got that dog in him ETC ETC but as soon as he goes against a, a defensive scheme that just doesn't invite mid-range shots and Tom Thibodeau who you know we can say he's a smart defensive coach and unlike Bud he has has made adjustments in the past um it's like i'm sure they're just gonna say okay well let's let's double him on the or let's 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 make some change to stop jimmy getting to his spot and stop getting him comfortable um but so it is it is a bit going back to the bud thing it is a little bit of a bummer for bud that like he's being exposed by the one person who's just like made custom built to absolutely cook his defensive schemes but in the same vein, we saw them play the Chicago Bulls last playoffs and the Bucks just beat them in five and it was But it was it's done. not like the one player custom built though, because there's so many players uh, like even just look at like players who made the all star teams this year. There's so many players whose game is is that. Mm. You know. Like I reckon Darren Fox would have a good series against the Milwaukee Bucks. But like yeah, I mean like yeah, he, he would. You know who else would have a good series against the Milwaukee Bucks? The Phoenix Suns. Kevin yeah. Durant, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are, are playing, you know, the same way. Get the get the defender one on one matchup, get the defender on the hip, rise up, mid range. Mm. There's lots of players who, who who play like that and if that's the kind of key to unlocking your D, then that's fine <clears throat> if you say, all right, our D is built to take away shots at the rim mm-hmm. and corner threes. And because of that, there's going to be some areas where we can be exploited. And if we're being exploited on a low, um, percentage, shot. A low percentage shot, most of the time, <clears throat> that's fine because that's that's kind of where we want, and we trust that the math is gonna have, is gonna work out that way. But when you're like you know there in real time, that's not the math isn't working out that way. When Jimmy Butler has like forty points mm. going into the going into overtime, mm, mm. you know yeah, he's math, feeling good. He's gonna do what he The wants. math doesn't mean anything. It yeah, means you're yeah, yeah. being exploited there. Yeah, <clears throat> you got five minutes <laughs> to stop being exploited and they didn't they didn't change anything they didn't yeah, do yeah. anything put put Giannis on him say okay Just you want to get to your you want to get to your spot well now there's a guy with a seven foot two wingspan there yeah okay yeah. go and go and do that <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you know like bring bring the double yeah do do something do do anything and he didn't he didn't do anything and then there's you know the the, there's stuff. the the Jimmy Butler hits the game time basket, which was a fucking insane, and actually a foul on the last two minute report. But whatever. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> a foul on on, on, on Connaughton. Yeah, 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 that wasn't called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cause there, well, because there was the discussion: did he push off Connaughton? But yeah, yeah. They what they called the foul on Connaughton instead. Yeah, well, in, in the, the last in the, in the last two minute report, they said there should have been a foul on Connaughton. Bloody hell, wouldn't I, that? I, be I believe that? I've got that right. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> um, well, that was a crazy kind of like mid air adjustment shot that he just flings yeah. up. That's hard. There's half a second left, and they, didn't and they had a timeout. Yeah. Call the timeout, advance the ball, yeah, 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 yeah. and try and get a tip. 
but or, but you're you're also forgetting that because if if you get to the NBA finals and you've won it all, for every um timeout you had remaining at the end of all your playoff games, you get a million dollars in revenue. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something like that. Bud, Bud has been, he's been bought. <laughs> um, that is, there's two things that are unforgivable and, and unacceptable. And that's like, that's one of them. Like, like you're, it's not like Steph Curry with the timeout in the, the, the Warriors game the other day. Yeah. Like it's like heat of the moment stuff. Like heat of the moment and it was a challenge. So yeah. it's like hard it's, to remember it's that not, your timeout It's not that. Used. Like you're, the coach and he's sitting down you 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 yourself have to be on that and then the assistant coach like someone fucking yell time out yeah, yeah yell yeah. time out so yeah. that bud can yell time out like someone as soon as that basket goes in someone has to be saying time out time yeah, out, time yeah, out. Yeah. it is unforgivable that that didn't happen <laughs> and the other thing that's unforgivable back injury not feeling himself you can't be shooting 10 from 23 yeah, from the yeah, free throw yeah. line in, in an elimination game yeah. in the playoffs, Giannis. It's, yeah. you, you, you just can't. Like, I don't know what he shot from the free throw line this season. But um, it was like, on the, on the series, it was like 48%. That's that's completely, <laughs> completely unacceptable. It's DeAndre um, Jordan with a Euro step. Particularly when, when in the... So he shot 64% from the free throw line, which is like not very good Mm. but then like you know LeBron probably shot like 68 this season Mm. so uh, you can still be uh, powerfully effective Mm. whilst not shooting well from the free throw line which Giannis has shown us but you you can't go 10 for 23 and miss crucial crucial ones down the stretch particularly when in the fourth quarter Giannis just couldn't score when Bam was on the floor Mm. like Giannis had Nothing, and it wasn't a. It didn't look to me like a uh, a physical thing because there were, there were moments in transition mm. earlier in the game where he's like pushing through two defenders who are trying to build a wall against him and get into the rim and finishing, mm. you know, or like soaring in for you know a putback of his own miss. Like he was he was being Giannis. He had thirty eight points and twenty rebounds. Mm. The 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 physical limitation like just wasn't there. It's just bam knows how to defend him I reckon Giannis was probably like like one for seven in the fourth quarter and then mm. the only basket that he scored in overtime was after Bam had fouled out and he was going against the Zella yeah. the Zella brother <laughs> Cody um, yeah um, which is which is which is you know obviously like not very good but it's yeah going out on a limb <laughs> but because Giannis is like one trick pony feels harsh, <laughs> particularly when the trick is so fucking good. Yeah, just be bigger, stronger, faster, and longer than every single other person, yeah, and yeah, be yeah. like the greatest paint finisher we've seen in the last twenty years. Yeah, pretty good trick. Yeah, but like there's n- there's you there's nothing to like unpick that. Yeah, and like he's he's twenty eight. He's only going to get slower, and he's only going to get less athletic, especially as like injuries like this back injury stack up. Yeah. Like this guy's falling right now, but we'll we'll have it. We'll have another chat. It's like it's not looking good for the Bucks. I'm happy to move on yes. to another series. But one thing I do want to mention before we move on: Grace Nellen with a shot to at least try and win the game, and he starts a Euro step with, point, up with point one seconds. The thing as well with that though, <laughs> I mean, like we, we're we're gonna kill Bud for lack of situational awareness. He start. He gets the ball. He's been camped at the three point line for the possession gets the he's in fucking view of the shot clock he's got a straight (laughs) line view of how many seconds are left Mm. knowing that it can't be like more than two yeah and decides to start the euro step going the opposite euro step going in towards the basket euro step going away from the rim that shot's not going in anyway but well it didn't um what series do you want to talk about next uh let's let's talk about uh, the Clippers versus Suns. All That's right. wrapped up. Let's let's sort of go over what we were saying before. How do the Suns lose this series the, against the Clippers? Oh, my, Clippers my Suns. In, oh, I thought you. My brother and class they won. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the Nuggets. No, oh. no, I want to talk about the Clippers, and then we can talk about. Then All we right. can talk about the Nuggets. You do your Clippers thing, then I'll talk about the Nuggets. Um, it simultaneously filled me with optimism and, and, and like showed that there's real cause for concern about the Suns moving forward. 
um, the the four one first round win against the Clippers because the 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 deck broke about as favorably as it possibly could for mm-hmm. us. Not only in that the Clippers with Kawhi are just an inferior team to the Suns anyway, <laughs> but then the Clippers without Kawhi are vastly <laughs> inferior. And yet, in Game Four, we made it as difficult as we possibly could to win. Yeah. Norm Norm Power with like. 42 points and Westbrook with like you know and a just elite kind of like high 20s all around game mm. which pains me to say but he actually was pretty good in this series mm. and then in in the fourth quarter of game five the clinching game that we ended up pulling out after a 50 point third quarter to fucking put it to bed 17 point lead entering the fourth it was down to two mm. with a couple minutes left and what really worried me in that game was that we literally just played into their hands on D so much. Mm. Wasn't the fact that they came all the way back down from, from 17 down, because what happened was they hit four threes on four consecutive possessions, and then on the fifth possession, they got an and one, which they made the free throw. So all of a sudden, they just scored 15 points. Mm. So... Okay, you're probably going to have your lead trimmed a little bit if your opponent scores 15 consecutive points. Mm. And that was just like, that was just, you know, Batum's hitting the pull-up, man's hitting the pull-up. Like, yeah. that's just stuff that, if that happens, like, that happens. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. On offense, they were double-teaming Booker every single time down because he had, like... He's just, he ended he's up with, he ended up with 47, fire. I think. So at this point, he must have had 40. Well, if it, was, if, it, if it wasn't for Jimmy Butler, Booker would be the MVP of the playoffs right now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, he was torching him. He was the, the mover and shaker behind the 50-point third quarter. So they're doubling him really aggressively. Like, as soon as he gets near the three-point line, they're bringing two defenders. And the lineups that we had out there were Paul Booker Durant... A Kogi who didn't play much at all in the first half of the series but yeah. had supplanted Craig by the second half of the series which I didn't get why Craig was starting well because because he's the better matchup against Kawhi right, right. which is what they're thinking because yeah. Akogi, Akogi's like 6'4 200 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Craig is 6'8 230 yeah like he's big yeah he's bigger but I mean poor man's Bruce Brown is just better but Keep yeah, he, he is. But I, I didn't mind the decision to to have Craig in there. But then okay. once you once once your defensive like needs change to yeah, guarding yeah. the Westbrook's powers and man's yeah. Kogi is much better. Suited. Which can I mention once Kawhi tore his meniscus. Like that's That also is so fucking dodgy from the Clippers. Yeah, it's yeah. like he's dazed questionable with right knee soreness and then once we're eliminated from the playoffs it's actually a torn meniscus like the torn meniscus <coughs> didn't come up on the first x-ray but they did this seven like, days ago they did this last they, was it last year or the year before against Dallas where it's like oh he's got a sore knee yeah why is he uh, why is he on the third fucking level like yeah. if, if he's got a sore knee yeah. shouldn't he just be wearing like some ripped jeans and like a black shirt on the sideline I hate to be a knock <laughs> but that's got to be a fine or well, yeah like, well or, Dan Dan Feldman was saying um, that like the the NBA has been fining teams for for like not reporting injuries correctly mm. because now that they have like a um now they've got a requirement by gambling companies to like you know supp- supply like fair and equal information to betters um but betters need to know that and like the people that the NBA are making fuck tons of money off need to know that like okay Kawhi's out for the rest of the series that's going to change my mindset so before like a couple of years ago maybe that's that's why the injuries were just so like the Clippers could get away with murder but now Adam Silver's sitting there like okay fuck a lot of our revenue is actually like focused on a fair injury reporting so there should be a fine like there should be just massive shit coming towards the Clippers but we haven't heard anything well we are in the darkest timeline that the reason why <laughs> the reason why that's happening is because the gambling the yeah. gambling industry needs literally. to know. That's, but that, that's, 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 that's the only thing that's changed that like makes it like I mean that should just be the case anyway yeah but the fact that it, the fact that that is the the impetus for the changes in in the enforcement of those rules is gambling money is, is pretty sad but yeah. yes it should be there's bad things in the world it should be like that that's that's that should be punished like you you <laughs> it's it's very obvious from the timeline that they knew that it was a torn meniscus yeah and that they weren't releasing that so that 
the Suns are not sure whether he's coming back or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that, also, like, I feel like if you're the Suns and you're sitting there like, man, we've got this game plan ready for Kawhi Leonard, and then, like, they rock up and it's Eric Gordon. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Surely you feel better? Well, then Norm Powell goes for 42 points, and it's like, oh, <laughs> okay, maybe it's not going to be that easy. Anyway, to bring it to bring it back to game five, they're doubling Booker. And we had, so we had Paul, Booker, Durant... Um, Akog. Akogi and Aiton slash Biombo out on the floor for most of the fourth. And Akogi took more shots than Durant mm. because they're doubling off of Akogi's man and then the ball is going ping, ping, ping and it's Akogi who's open and he's taken f- open threes. They weren't even bothering to get out to him. And then like he's taking like 15 footers and he's just, he just missing, missing, mm. missing, missing. And there was no counter like Booker did the right thing and got off the ball every time that came which is which is good that's what you want to be doing but there was no kind of like counter to the fact that that's exactly what they wanted him to do mm. um like the ball is that Kevin Durant is also on the court like if they're going to bring if they're going to bring a double, double to one person. Bring yeah. it o- like bring Kevin Durant over and get him involved in the action because mm-hmm. then you're gonna get, you're gonna give Kevin Durant like I like he's gonna be open or you're gonna give him an like an a, an ISO opportunity one on one on the rim with no no one at the you know no one in the paint to defend him because everyone's yeah. come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was just a bit like um, frustrating and like concerning to watch because it was we were so clearly having our lead chipped away by doing exactly what the Clippers wanted us to do Mm. and that was very obvious Mm. and yet there was no like maybe they were saying stay the course this is going to work out in the end and it did but Mm. like Mm. the if if that's the plan and you 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 know you're like down by you you know you're down in that quarter by 15 and your 17 point lead has been trimmed to two you need to adjust Mm. Um, and so I'm less inclined to view it as like stay the course and more inclined to view it as like a serious schematic weakness that they will need to address because any team can do that yeah like literally anyone can do that Denver can do that well that's a beautiful segue because let's let's look at this Denver series which I think the winner of this series is the favourite to win the NBA championship like these two teams are fully healthy they're both looking good-ish I mean you've just put forward the case that they're not looking good but Devin Booker's playing the best basketball of his whole entire career at the perfect time Jamal Murray's coming on hot after a season of ups and downs and he's like yes it was the Minnesota Timberwolves but you can only play who's in front of you and he cooked the fuck out of him and he was just doing that thing where he's just like bouncing around and he's jumping off everywhere and he's just doing circles around Jokic and it looks good and it looks healthy. Nikola Jokic is just, you're going to roll him out there and he's going to be a good basketball player. Like he had a very bad game in game four, but it was like 28, 10 and 13. <clears throat> um, everyone's looking good on Denver. Again, they played the Minnesota Timberwolves, which is, I guess, why you go for the number one seed. Um, but... In saying that, DeAndre Ayton is like the kryptonite for Nikola Jokic. Somehow. And somehow and some way. But DeAndre Ayton has been playing some of the worst basketball of his career. Maybe Devin Book has like borrowed some basketball skill from him and yeah. it's just it's just sucked out of him. But some fucking monsters shit going on. If we if we say that DeAndre Ayton is at one end of the spectrum playing the worst basketball that we've seen him play in a long time. But he's uh, on the other end of the spectrum. He's very, very, very good against Nikola Jokic all the time. So much so that Jokic like compliments him all the time before games start and before a series starts. We need to see whereabouts on that spectrum it's going to fall. Um, it's it's oh, it's just so weird. Um, and then Kevin Durant going up against just a bunch of overmatched defenders in in KCP, Bruce Brown, Jeff Green, who's been in the rotation. Um, I would say obviously that Aaron Gordon's going to get the primary matchup on um, Kevin Durant. Aaron Gordon does great, but he does very well against smaller players. And he's like part of the best thing about him is that he's able to hang with some of the smaller guys, like we've seen with Damian Lillard in the past. And sometimes he's t- he's, he's picked up Devin Booker and it's worked well. I'm very interested to see what he does against Kevin Durant and especially on offense because KD in the playoffs is just lo- on defense sorry um, KD in the playoffs is just locked in on defense um, and Aaron Gordon was just like posting up Carl Anthony Towns and somehow getting to the rim just because he's a better basketball player which is pretty fucking cool I think um, but this this is just going to be such a fucking fun series and I haven't even talked about Chris Paul who's like you know the point guard and we know that in the playoffs when you really need a basket 
if a blazing hot Devin Booker doesn't work and if Kevin Durant just can't shoot out of a, every small defender, um, Chris Paul's just going to put Nikola Jokic in a pick and roll and he's just going to do that snake dribble where he curves around and hides behind his big and then he's just got an open midi for days. Um, this is going to be such a fun series. Where do you want to start? That's that's the that's the layout. But what do you what do you see as a as a Phoenix Suns fan heading into this series? Well, I I think that Aiden and Jokic matchup is a good place to start because Aiden has been really good, as you say, in the past against Jokic and against Denver. Um, when particularly like in the last two seasons, when. We played Denver in we played Denver two in our in our playoff run two years ago. The headbutt, the <coughs> headbutt finals, right? with um, campaign. Yeah. Is, yeah, is campaign back by the way? Nah, he's still he's still hurt. Is he going to be good for game one? Uh, I don't know. I'm, which, I, I'm not sure. Which is tomorrow? What the, what so the, they might be announcing it tomorrow. Prognosis is. Let's have a look. Um. Mm, no news. <laughs> No news is good news, they Alf. say. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no news. Mate. No, okay. Ava- he was he was available for game five, but didn't play. Right. So he he should be he should be good too. Right? But um, I wouldn't expect to see another headbutt. Well, another headbutt <laughs> slash a lot of campaign. Um, but like Aiton, I like. There's th- this is a different Aiton to what we've seen the last two seasons. Yeah. Um. And this is a better Nuggets team where Jokic doesn't have to just do straight post stuffs a lot of the time. Well, yeah, I mean, Aiden's like number one kind of defensive skill is like that he's just fucking really good post defender. Um, everything else he's kind of like average to good at, but he's an awesome, awesome post defender. He's big, he's strong, he doesn't fucking bite on like silly little like head fakes, pump fakes, which makes him a good matchup. But in his like screen hard rebound defend the rim era of the last two seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, where we've had the most success as a team. He he was a really good matchup, but this season he's like not been very good. Uh which is just un- which is unfortunate because it, it seems to be like mental and mental and effort things. Like on yeah. on D he just he's never been like a great rim protector, but like just by being seven foot and athletic and by being there, like you can do a hell of a lot. Like you can be, you can be a good rim protector by simply just knowing where to be. Well, just look at his backup. Bismack Biombo is still in the NBA because he's a tall person who sometimes is where he should be. Exactly. Aiden just wanders. He just, he just kind of roams around and not in like a Giannis way. In an aimless, confused <laughs> yeah. way, off, like, as an off-ball defender, like he doesn't come and help when he's supposed to help. He kind of like comes off of his man and will leave his man like open in in a, um, you know, under the rim or in or in the paint, like to come over and not help. Like it's one thing to kind of be like, oh shit, fucking like you know, Jimmy Butler's got the ball and he's you know, one-on-one and he's five feet away from the rim, I'm going to go over and help. I'm going to come hard and I'm going to go now. Mm -hmm. If I leave my man open and he finds my man open under the rim, whatever. He just will fucking just wander Mm. for no reason whatsoever and Mm -hmm. leave his guy open but not get over to help. And it's it's the sort of thing that Jokic will just feast on, to be yeah. honest, because Jokic is not only an expert at finding people in those half spaces, but inhabiting those half spaces himself. And if Jokic is catching the ball like eight feet from the rim open like all right that's just a little soft hook and that that's going in mm-hmm. at the same time um can i just say with Jokic when he does get those wide open shots it's a little soft hook into an offensive rebound and a and a put back for two points yeah um so i'm i'm not at all kind of like in the headspace of like feeling good about about that matchup yeah um you know, or or even feeling like that matchup can be kind of even close to close to an e- an even split because I think not not only is you know Jokic like a potential MVP winner for the third straight year, but yeah, Aiden is kind of like his his head just doesn't seem with it, and like for a team with such like veteran leadership, yeah. both from a coaching and an on court like standpoint, and and having seen him commit to the role and play the role that we need him and want him to play in mm. previous seasons to see him like not really playing at the moment it's kind of perplexing especially because like when Chris Paul came in it was like 
you know, John Drayton sitting there in press conferences saying, oh, I should give you like a, a fraction of my salary, my next contract, which funnily enough didn't come too easily. But he's like, I should give you some of my next contract because I've just been feasting, you know, a few throwing me these lobs and like just putting me in the right place as a defensive coordinator. But he just stopped doing that. Like, mm. it's, and it's not even like Kevin Durant came. It's like, no, you were running this back to be like a great defensive team with like, you know, the two guards and Mikael Bridges. And he's just, he just wasn't doing it. Yeah, he just really has, it feels like he's he's kind of switched off. So Jokic should be able to really make a lot happen as a scorer. And obviously he will, regardless of who he's playing against as a facilitator. But so let's, okay, let's, let's go out on a limb and say the potential three-time MVP is going to beat the bad defensive center. You've got Devin Booker and Kevin Durant versus Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray. Do you feel like extremely confident mm. that you're going to exploit them on defense and be able to defend them both on the other end? Yeah, I think I think at any one time, Denver only has a shot at keeping one of them quiet. Yeah. And that's basically who do you want to put Aaron Gordon Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Aaron Gordon has been a good matchup on Booker as well yeah. like in, in the past. Like Aaron Gordon has been... Um, he's the sort of player that Booker will try and exploit for fouls. But he's just good. <laughs> but yeah, if if that's not coming all the time, yeah, he's good. He's good and he's big, and and it's going to be harder. Yeah. But like, if you put Aaron Gordon on on Booker, then you, you, who are you putting on? Uh, KCP like, on. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, you, you you can't really do that. Yeah. So, and I feel confident between between Booker, Durant, and Okogie who is like just a really fucking good on ball defender yeah. and would be a great matchup for Murray. Like we yeah, won't yeah. be seeing Tory Craig come come in in the starting lineup for, no. for this game. Right? Well, especially because like to do what guard Aaron Gordon or well, or, yeah, um, or MPJ. You know, it would be it, yeah, it would be MPJ. But Okogi would be the matchup for Murray, I would imagine. And yeah. Booker has been playing out of his skin defensively. Um, yeah, at least he did against the Clippers. So I I think like my prediction would be like the the first possession of game one it'll be Aaron Gordon on um on Kevin Durant and then just a collection of like you know KCP Bruce Brown and Jeff Green on Devin Booker and that just won't cut it like that's that's just not going to work um let's give our predictions for this series um just so they're they're in the airwaves I'm going to go with the Denver Nuggets in seven games I will. I'm going to say Suns in six because I'm feeling optimistic. <laughs> Cautiously or just optimistic? Just optimistic. Yeah, nice. For, it's, it's nice. I'm shedding the caution points <laughs> in my life. Um, I feel like we've got enough time to talk about one series. Um, may I suggest said Golden State Warriors? Um, Please. But let's, let's keep it brief because they are playing today and... Some of the things I say might just be moot if we if we just lose today, um, despite winning the past three games after being down two zero, uh, for the first time in Steph Curry's career. I mean, if he if he goes backs against to... the wall and the champs coming through. <laughs> What's for that? What what well, backs against the wall against a, a young up and coming team? Well, you, know, you just told me that it's the first time it's ever happened in his career. I know, I know. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. As as you said at the start of the pod, you were you were talking about like the. The Boston Celtics struggling a bit against the Atlanta Hawks and even even um, losing a game when DeJounte Murray wasn't playing. Just on a side note, did you see the DeJounte Murray like headbutt to the ref after the game? No. So he got suspended for... Um, like He was leaving the court after the game. What, that, after, the, after the elimination? After, no, no, after the game they put them down 3-1. And then oh when he yeah yeah, yeah, yeah Dejounte yeah. Murray's yeah. walking out and he just like stuns his head at the ref um, pretty cool that it was just like a swift suspension um, but yeah the Golden State Warriors just fucking looking really good like Andrew Wiggins just hasn't missed a beat we talked about this last week and we talked about this when uh, last time we spoke were they down two zero was that when we fuck it's crazy that I came on this podcast and said we're just gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> I've got such it's a... It's fun- actually not crazy at all. It's actually very in character and, and <laughs> keeping with historical fashion. Just, well, so you, just so you know, we've got almost 200 episodes of you being on this type of shit. Um, but just so people know, it's not always the case because I was talking to someone about um, soccer last night and they're like, oh, so... Bloody footy. They're like, would you, um, would you follow a team, Sean? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Watford. And they're like, oh, are they in the Prem? I'm like, nah, nah. And we're actually like nowhere near getting promoted to the Prem and it's looking quite bad. Congratulations to Sheffield United for locking up the second automatic promotion spot. <laughs> um, but, 
yeah, the Golden State Warriors just look good. We just look like a well-oiled machine, and Sabonis is just like he—he he is not a sixteen-game player. Like he is just not ready for the playoffs. And and I'm working on an article which I was going to send you a draft yesterday. But I'm going to give it give it the weekend to talk about. We're just asking what can the Sacramento Kings do from here to like get better. Mm. Um, and I'm quite optimistic that they'll be maybe a top five seed for the next couple of years. But yeah, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, like what the fuck do you do about Demontis Sabonis? Because he's such a key part to what well, they do. Well, why do you say he's not? I mean, obviously he's struggled in this series, but why do you say he's not? Well, he's same game player. He's he struggles so much because like Draymond Green is like looking at him, just licking his lips, saying, "I'm gonna fucking finish over you." Like Draymond Green had so many times where he grabbed the ball at the top of the three point line, he would try to get those dribble handoff actions working with like Steph and Clay. It wasn't working. He turns around and goes, "Oh well, Sabonis is under the rim. Obviously, Draymond's not a shooter." And Draymond goes sick, dribble, 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 and he puts up some ugly shot, but he's just so confident he's not going to get it blocked. And he's he, like, what, he had 21 points, seven re- seven assists, and four steals in in game five, which was so cool. And like some of those steals were just like Sabonis posting up, and Draymond's like, yoink. There was like two just face-up steals, which were just, I, mean, I, feel, I feel bad for Sabonis there. But what's, what Sabonis did in the regular season that was so well was doing that Draymond thing where he's able to sit there and run those dribble handoffs. But like Sabonis has the threat of being able to post up and being able to like get to the rim. So it's not like Draymond's there running a dribble handoff. Oh, it doesn't work. Don't worry. I'll just out overpower my defender because he can't do that. But in the... In the in the postseason, when the refs swallow the whistles a bit, like we're seeing Andrew Wiggins just like he would he would get into a bit of a squat and just shove his knee into Sabonis's thigh, and that just stops him. Like mm-hmm. Sabonis is just bumping against a brick wall, and he looks at the ref and he goes, "You're going to call the foul? He's sticking my, he's sticking his knee into me." And then Andrew Wiggins is like, "Shut the fuck up, man! Like mm-hmm. it's the playoffs. Like they're not going to call a little ticky tack post up foul." Um, and like yes, the you know Sabonis is still getting the rebound, and he starts the break, and sometimes they'll get some really easy actions because he's just got four guards just running around him. But when when we've got time to set up our defense, we are more than happy. We've never sent a double this whole entire series on the post up, and if he's just going to post up for for ten seconds, none of the other guards are going to touch the ball. If he's just going to post up against Kevon Looney, who can do it, Draymond Green, who can do it, and Andrew Wiggins, who that exact player that I'm talking about, he ended up failing him um, on the shot, and he went to the free throw line but we just sat there all four defenders are sitting on the shooters and Sabonis is just spending all of his effort he's just exerting his whole energy just to try and get past Andrew Wiggins it's like if your best things post up and like just being a being a post operator and you can't do it on a, on a small forward that's just you yeah. you're going to say on a rainy Tuesday night and <laughs> um, but it's but it's true because yeah. because you know uh, like the counter hasn't hasn't been there for Sabonis yeah when his utility as like a kind of like a, a DHO facilitator at the top, you know, just inside the three point line has kind of been diminished. And then, you know, to wanting to turn him into into a score rather than a facilitator because of that and it just hasn't worked. Mm. Um That being said though, Looney and Green are like bad matchups. Yeah. And obviously, if we're forecasting like a Sacramento playoff kind of picture for the next, like, say, three seasons. Sometimes they'll face Aiton. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and sometimes you will face Green. Sometimes you will face Looney. But, like, if they if they go through, like, let's, you know, this is just p- like pie in the sky, pure hypothesis. But if Sacramento ends up going through, mm-hmm. if they win the next two games... Mm-hmm. And Memphis goes through. Yeah. It's a good matchup. There's uh, no, yeah. you know, there's no Stephen Adams there for him to kind of worry about. Yeah. And Jaron Jackson Jr. is... Skinnier. The sort of player that, you know, Sabonis can not exploit. But, like, he's a better matchup than Looney and Green. Like, you, you can take Triple J into yeah, the post because yeah, he yeah. doesn't have the physical dimensions that those guys do. The physical strength. Whereas Sabonis yeah. actually is a bit of an ox. Yeah. Obviously, Wiggins is like, you know one of the kind of premier like six eight, six nine big body men mm. wings. Mm. So he's a good matchup to kind of deal with that in the post. But like Triple J shouldn't be as much of a problem for Sabonis. Mm. Now the the inverse is like, all right, well, <clears throat> maybe you're going up against Anthony Davis, who's mm. a really awesome post defender and, you know, like Triple J is an awesome rim protector mm, but just stronger but there will be you know as often as there will be a team that has like a fucking elite defensive five that can neutralize him there, there will be a team that doesn't yeah, um, yeah. and yeah. It, it, it's just maybe for the Sacramento like playoff theory moving forward not 
amazing that their first you know matchup for Sabonis as part of this new iteration of the team came against such a bad matchup. Mm, mm. Maybe we'd be feeling a whole lot better about Sabonis as a 16 game player versus an 82 game player if he hadn't gone up against like two yeah. just elite defensive fives. Look, I, I get there is a little bit of recency bias, bias, and what's what's the bias where it's like you, oh, a small sample size, right? It's like this is the only thing we have to go off here. Yeah. Um, but it's just like you know we've we've still got great perimeter defenders like we we've we've got great perimeter defenders as well we've got taller players to put on someone like Darren Fox and despite it potentially being a bad matchup for Darren Fox like Fox is absolutely killing it Fox is you know averaging over 30 points a game and he just looks extremely comfortable and he's just like when when the shot clock's going down he's like okay I'm just gonna go put the ball in the basket clutch player of the year clutch player of the year and it's fucking scary as a as a guy watching against him but um yeah Sabonis like the the theory with him as well is that like you're gonna have the number one offense as the Sacramento Kings that's so cool but you've got the 27th best defense um which isn't as cool, um, and that's like that's that's just the trade off that they're making. But as soon as you you go against defenders who can't like, yeah, and, and maybe maybe they'll go against Jaron Jackson Jr. and maybe Sponis will mm. look sick. But on defense, you have to be able to if that's your roster construction. Yeah, you have to be able to exploit the offense because your defense is just yeah. going to get fucking roasted, even by Draymond Green. And the problem the problem that they that they might very well run into. Um, is thinking, fuck, well, our day's not been very good because we're relying on Sabonis to do traditional like, big man things mm. that he's not actually that good at doing. Like, yeah, what if we yeah. got him some big man help? What, yeah, if we got, yeah. like, a, what if we got a really good rim protector? I was going to make this joke, him, done to <laughs> And put him next to Sabonis. And that way Sabonis doesn't have to worry about protecting the paint as much and we can still... Maybe we can like boost our defensive numbers and then it's like, you have... The Indiana Pacers, <laughs> yeah, right yeah, yeah. there. So they they're gonna find out, you know, if Sabonis kind of if it if it does prove to be the case that Sabonis is easily neutralized in some of these offensive matchups, they're gonna find out very quickly that that's not a recipe for postseason success. Just because in building a team in part around him as one of your you know two best players as one of your pillars yeah you are going to have defensive limitations and you are going to have a ceiling that's probably not in the top half of of the besties they might be able to you know buttress the rest of the day with like really good players and yeah. they might not be the 27th day they might be the 16th day but like the 16th day doesn't win the championship like, well ever. i i Look, the the Sacramento, the Sacramento Kings will go as far as the Denver Nuggets are going to go this this season. Like, if the Denver Nuggets can't get it to work this season, all of a sudden there's going to like, and you've seen the the pressure put commas up there. Um, the no, I didn't. I don't. I don't. I'm. I don't agree with that because okay. well, because like like Sabonis is is much worse than Jokic. Much worse than Jokic is the jailbreak. Jokic is like the platonic, like fully idealized version of Sabonis because if Andrew Wiggins is sticking his knee into that <laughs> Jokic, I'll, I'll tell gonna you crack that, him in the face. I'll tell you that it's not going to do a thing. <laughs> true, true. You know, like okay, Jokic no, right. has the the ability to kind of counter everything that Sabonis does. In it. Jokic is Jokic is a potential three-time MVP. But also Jokic is the best is a, case scenario for a Sabonis like player. Yeah, I know, but we're not talking hypotheticals. We're talking Jokic and Sabonis. Okay, okay. So the Kings, I don't think it's fair to say that the Kings will go... Like, the, the Nuggets are somehow the test case for the Kings. Because, like, if this is a, if we say this is not a great matchup for Denver in the second round against the Suns, and then Jokic goes and averages 36, 18, and 12, and yeah. they win, that doesn't mean that the Kings have any chance of doing anything similar because you know Sabonis is not going to average 36, 18, and 12. That's true, but just factoring in like internal improvement. Like Jokic wasn't averaging that many points earlier on in but his career. But Sabonis is 26. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. I don't think Sabonis is going to Im- Im- improve by like... Okay, but, but, but you get what I mean. Like Jokic is just going to get called up on pick and rolls with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. And if he does what I predict and escapes the series in a seven-game victory, it's like, okay, well, this you, you can win a title like this. Um, but right now, on the absolute lower end, like the, the bottom end of that scale, being Sabonis, or maybe even being Alperen Shingun, um, it's like, 
if 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 Jokic can't do it at the top end as like the best 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 case, case scenario where he's not uh, an incredible defender, but whenever you put him out there, your offense is like the best the NBA has ever seen. Um, and Sabonis is obviously like bad on defense, but a very very good offensive player. If Jokic can't get it done, then Sabonis stands like a snowball's chance in hell. Um, yeah, yeah, I I, I kind of I, I agree with that. And, not, and not, just, not trying to say that you know Sabonis is just as good as Jokic. Yeah, I, I I understand what you're saying, but it's just a, again kind of goes to show that like you in terms of constructing a postseason team, you would rather have a, like a limited one way big man who's good at deep than than a limited one way big man who's good at offense I, even if yeah, even yeah. if their offensive ceiling is like one of the most skilled skilled and versatile offensive big men in the game which mm-hmm. is what Simonis is um, yeah it's like you you said to me when we were sitting in the nook hashtag nook cast that if the Suns had Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney instead of DeAndre Ayton for this postseason we would be a better team and like I, I agree because whilst Looney is exploitable even as a defender because you know he's good against smaller guys but like if you take Looney away from the rim and match him up against Devin Booker 10 times Devin Booker's getting 6 buckets and fouled twice Mm. but he does all of the other things well and Mm. he's kind of scheme proof and he's just going to rebound and defend the right way and be in the right place Mm. Um, and he's not catching a lob but he's certainly going to score 5 points again yeah exactly but you don't you don't don't need him to because every team like every playoff team has has such skilled players at some combination of 1 through 4 yeah you know that you don't really need necessarily to be getting all of that like offensive creation from the 5 it's awesome if you can if you you can get it but it's not a necessity like every single playoff team can create offense without their 5 and I I I mean just off the top of my head Denver's probably the only the only exception there Mm. like we just saw Milwaukee versus Miami. Bam is also a really skilled big man. Bam wasn't creating the offense in the fourth quarter in overtime. It was Jimmy Butler because he's, mm. just, he's just getting it done. Um, Kawan Looney joins Wilt Chamberlain and Nate Thurman as the only players in Warriors history to record multiple 20 rebound games in the same playoff series. Um, and then there was another stat, me and my homies, where it's like <laughs> Looney's like the only player... Uh, no, him and like Wilt and Bill Russell are the only players to have like multiple games of five, five points over five assists and twenty rebounds. Me and my homies. Um, Kevon Looney with like seven assists last game and was doing the operating when Draymond was on the bench. So He's fucked learned. up. He's learned something. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to wrap us up with? Well, just just quickly, we are recording this just as Golden State will probably have tipped off for game six. Five to eight points right now. Jeez, it's a nail biter <laughs> in the early going. So without making like a prediction for this game or potentially a game seven, let's just say Golden State's up 3-2. The team, ESPN probably has a stat for this. The team that's up 3-2 wins the series X amount percent of the time. I reckon it's over 50%. So... How do you feel quickly about a series against Memphis in the second round or against LA in the second round? I'm more scared of LA because Anthony Davis cooks us. And even though he's been putting in fucking 13 point performances, um, yeah. He had that one game though, it was game three or game four. Skilled big men just actually. Where he had like 30 plus and was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> skilled skilled big, big men cook us. And while Kevon Looney has those. NBA history fucking marks of the 20 rebounds um, going against Jared Vanderbilt um, and Anthony Davis at once is, is a lot harder um, but I think we're going to beat both of them you think you're going to beat both of them yeah Memphis is just the the anti-vibe team right now Yeah. but if they come back from 3-1 then it's probably going to look a lot better but we don't see teams come back from 3-1 very often because it's near impossible to do yeah um, how do you feel about the Warriors going against let's, let's just call it the Lakers I really don't know, to be honest. Really? You're not, you're well, not confident in the Warriors? I think the Warriors would win that, but I'm not confident about it because Le- like LeBron James is on the team. Yeah, but LeBron James is being exploited as a bad defender this series. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not 
We've, we've got quite a good resume going against LeBron James. We've done it before. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I, I seem to remember. I'm just really... I'm, I'm preemptively pissed off because Draymond's going to come out in a fucking post, uh, post-game presser and be like, man, all respect to the GOAT. Like, LeBron James is just, like, the greatest player of all time. And I'm so humbled to be able to play against him in a series just watching Titans clash and then just not answer the question and then say, all right, who's next? And then just go, man, next question. LeBron, media mogul, you know, just like absolute shoe icon, greatest player of all time. Next question. <laughs> it's just, I fucking hate it when he sucks up to him. Oh, he sucks uh, up to him off the court and then on the court, it's like animosity. Hasn't really been since he joined Clutch. Yeah. It's always just been like a lot of dap ups and mm. he, like they'll both fall down and he's like giggling with them like <laughs> we fell down there. Oh, Daps shit, him up, runs guy, back on offense. Guy, we fell down. I hate when my favorite player doesn't hate other players enough. Well, just, especially me, a very emotional watcher. Just, like, I just want to punch Malik Monk in the head. But then a week from now I won't even remember who he is. Just before we wrap up, um, just shout out to Lucas, who's travelling somewhere around Greece at the moment but popped into the GC last night to give the Dylan Brooks update, <laughs> which is that he he might be the first member of the illustrious thirty twenty seventy club. <laughs> uh, don't ask me what number it starts. With, it's, <laughs> it's not a good answer. Uh, That's what I wanted to say. Talking about Jimmy Butler saying saying, saying to Drew Holiday that he shit while well, he down nineteen points and then ended up winning and scoring on Drew Holiday. Yeah. Dylan Brooks talking shit to LeBron even before the series saying I want LeBron Dylan Brooks saying that and then going 1 of 13 not saying a fucking word Dylan Brooks has as many ejections as he does combined steals and blocks in this series really which is one. Ah, oh, true so <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's shooting 30-20-70 so it's it's uh it's not looking good at all from uh from Mr. Brooks on and off the court because uh, fucking Shit bloke, shit fashion. The garbage truck is, is vibrating up. your windows. It's vibrating the windows. Do you hear that often? No, I'm not usually home when the garbage truck picks it up. Yeah. I usually pick it up on Friday morning. I'm at work. Oh, I don't know why they're uh, doing it now. Anzac Day. Yeah. No, that's that's no bullshit. Every day I got pushed back. Why? Anzac, Anzac Day. Day. I thought you said exacto, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I get, I get. Sean's saying things now. Yeah. Every. Do they tell people this? Like, no, nah, because I put the fucking bins out on Monday night. Yeah. Thinking, well, you know, it's a. I feel like it's an essential service. Yeah, because they did the same on Good Friday. They, they, they ours is Thursday, and they didn't get picked up. So uh, they didn't pick it up on Thursday. Oh, you put your bins out on Thursday. Yeah. I was gonna have a word to the fucking mall and council, man. Mate, Mary Beck. Mary Beck. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is Mary- that? Oh, has it changed? Yeah. Mary From Beck. Mall? You haven't heard that. I don't live here anymore. Bloody hell, man. No, we, uh, they used to live in last year four, changed four. from Moreland because they discovered that the name Moreland was named after a bad person, a plantation slash slave owner yeah. in, uh, in the Caribbean and who owned land here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they changed it to Marybeck. Obviously, the Mary Creek runs through part of yeah, Moreland Council, yeah, yeah. just about 600 metres that way. Um, and Mary Beck means rocky country. Yeah, in, cool. In the Woi Wurrung language, so we fucking changed it. Um, I saw something where they're they're updating the signs on Glen Huntley train station, or just the the name Glen Huntley, because it's like two words, not one word. But some signs refer to it as like the the wrong version. I've uh, always only ever seen it as one word. I think it's two words potentially oh, yeah. but um, yeah someone was just saying like oh no this this is the right way to say it here's the boat that Glenn Huntley was named after and I was like are we changing these things from the boats <laughs> but anyway that's I thought they would do numbers but you google yeah it is two words yeah bloody hell um, located within the city of Glen Ira it's crazy that you are like a bit of a Southside girly Monday um, to Friday oh I hate it so much it's also real hard to do because like I'll be driving around town with like all my workmates which is an absolute fucked up sentence by me just then but we'll be going around get going checking out local bar me shops and then like I'll just be sitting in the car and I've said this to my mate Sam just driving through going man the fucking southeast sucks shit this is disgusting and everyone in the vehicle with me grew up and lives in the southeast yeah. and i'm just sitting there going this is f- 
Hungry Jacks? What the nah. fuck's that? <laughs> nah. But it's just, it's so the shit. The sound of these gives America vibes. Yeah. yeah. It's really like, like so residential and like major wide open roads. Just, nah, just the Southeast to me is just lots of concrete next to a freeway with massive weeds sticking yeah. out in between the concrete. If you're from, if you're listening to this and you're all from the southeast, stop listening. <laughs> that's what. That's the the deep two NBA podcast does not support Melbourne southeast and suburbs. When Alicia Keys was it who said concrete jungle? Yeah, that's what they mean. They just mean like overgrown grass that the fucking council doesn't get rid of in the southeast. Yeah, fuck, fuck no. they suck. All right, well, let's wrap this puppy up because you've got to get home and watch The Warriors. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I will talk to you in the second round. <laughs> we were over the moon when we first heard that the NBA was going to be televised on Australian free-to-air TV in the 2019-20 season. It didn't exactly go swimmingly with the nasty cough halting the season and games getting cancelled left, right and centre, but it was a huge step and an exciting one for basketball fans all across the country. Better yet, it wasn't a commercial channel cashing in on some basketball nerds like us. It was SBS, one of our public broadcasters. Unfortunately, the NBA wasn't the only thing SBS was pushing last season. They also ran advertisements from Sportsbet, Ladbroke, Bet365, Bet Easy, and Neds, some of the biggest sports betting companies in Australia. In a one step forwards, two steps backwards move, SBS has dropped the ball here. As a public broadcaster, SBS plays a key role in providing relevant, culturally appropriate health information to local communities. The last thing SBS should be doing is offering a platform for gambling companies during the most financially unstable time in recent memory. This past year, men aged 18 to 24 made up 79% of new gambling account holders with increased median spending and frequency of bets. This is the last thing we should be spending our money on given the financial uncertainty that comes with the pandemic. During COVID lockdowns, wagering companies spent more money on advertising and incentives to gamble, and it worked. SBS needs to hear from viewers that gambling ad revenue isn't worth the harm it causes. Call on the SBS chair, George Savitas, to put community health ahead of gambling revenue by signing the petition at www.endgamblingads.org.au forward slash get gambling off SBS with hyphens in between.